Um, but can you see that the fruit are just lying there? Its destiny is to be received and eaten. So the earth's produce is there to nourish the rest of life. The fruit is very innocent. It Once it's ripened, it's there. It gives of itself. Uh, it's the 10th of October at the moment. And we've just entered into a new energy. And this is the energy of innocence, like a fruit that is lying on the ground, waiting to be picked up. It has no expectation of who should pick it up or how it should be picked up or if it should be picked up at all. But it's just there for the taking, very innocently and just being. Of course, as we go through the seasonal cycle, we are invariably affected by the seasons. So when we get to this stage, at this point in October, we also begin to give of our fruits and allow life to carry us into this end part of the cycle, this last phase that takes us into the death of this cycle before it renews again. And so there's necessarily in this last phase, which is characterized by the thunder, which is decay, there is a letting go. And we're standing at the threshold of letting go. So there's a, like this innocence of, okay, take me. I, I'm yours. <laughs> let, me, let me go with this flow. I can't actually resist the flow of the end of the cycle. If I tried to, I would not be renewed again. I would stagnate. So I have to let go and go with it. So we see that this thunder at the bottom, this is the energy of decay. And the heaven at the top, that's like the natural law, the order of life that is saying, okay, now it's time to enter into this last phase of letting go. If we correlate that to a mythological story, as I have been doing with the Shakti dance classes and phases, correlated to Persephone's journey, Keridwin's chase, Bridget and the Green Man, Mary Magdalene to the Demeter story. We're characterizing these different phases. So just a little snippet from the first part of the Persephone's journey. Here, Persephone is sitting underneath a, an apple tree that has ripened fruits. Persephone is this Greek goddess who is the daughter of Demeter, the goddess of agriculture. And in a way, Persephone herself personifies the fruit, the ripened fruit on her mother's tree. So she's very juicy and ripe and voluptuous, still on the tree at this point. This is just before autumn equinox. And this is called abundance, actually. This story starts with abundance and she's together with other fruits on the tree, also with the animals around her. And this is being with family, where all of this harvest is culminating together. They all set each other off and support each other in a network of familiar ties. Then there is the harvest and the enjoying of the harvest. So the harvest is the equinox, and then that just after the equinox, we have the beauty and the grace and the adornment. And she adorns herself as we do at Harvest Festival. Uh, we deck the halls with all this beautiful produ produce. And this is relating to hexagram 22, which is the qualities of beauty and grace that follow that abundance. But then directly after, we get this darkening of light. And this is where we also really begin to feel the change in the atmosphere and the days getting shorter. And in this story, this is where Hades appears. And so Hades is the lord of the underworld. And so his is the realm of death. And he's been attracted to this abundant beauty of Persephone. But his appearance is also heralding her imminent decay. 
And that was happening for us, this quality of darkening of light between the 1st and the 10th of October. So just what we're coming out of. And then comes this period of innocence. So Hades comes and says, I want to pluck this fruit. I want to pick up this fruit. And she in her innocence and her lack of preconceptions is open to this. She says, okay, this cycle of decay, I am going to go with it. You know, there are many different ways that this quality can be interpreted. It can be interpreted as a naivety that she's allowing herself to go with an energy that's dangerous, or it can be a wiseness of knowing it is my path to go into this cycle of decay and to let go and to go into my core self in order to renew. So these are some of the themes that we explore within the um, Persephone's journey course, which is related to the different qualities and the different exercises reflecting this time of year. And through this, we begin to also embody those different themes. And as we embody them, we begin to understand more deeply what are these qualities and these different phases of the cycles. And they become meaningful and lived for us. And through that, they become, that experience becomes allocated to a particular time of year, a particular kind of experience that we have embodied and connected to in different ways. And that stays there for us. So every time we meet that moment in the cycle again, like next year, it's like, oh yeah, I remember what this was and I remember some of the lessons that I had. And that will help me as I go through this moment of the year in the next cycle. But of course it won't be quite the same because there will be different factors happening. And I will experience that quality in a different way, slightly different way. And there'll be new lessons to learn. And so then those new lessons get accumulated together with the ones I had the year before. And then I go through another year and I experience it in an even more different way. And so each year, my understanding of that quality gets enhanced and enlarged. So not just for one quality, but then for all the qualities around the cycle, gradually we get to know them. And then we see we're not just applying it to the seasonal cycle, but also how we experience going through the lunar cycle. And not just those two cycles, but also when we're doing a movement. Ah, yes, I remember these qualities in, in these mo moments of the, the movement cycle, or within the breath cycle, or within the relationship cycle, within the cycle of our lives as we correspond. And so we then begin to have more understanding of how processes in general pan out. And when is the moment to move forwards? When is the moment to pull back and be patient or to listen? And when is the moment to push through and when is the moment to be resilient? And when is the moment when we can expand and express ourselves? And, you know, sometimes it's just intuitive. We know when and how to do that. And other times we have no idea where we are. But through this relativity of the map, we understand, aha, I'm in this moment of the phase and I know what that that moment requires of me and then I, I find my way I find my support right so enough theory and talking um, 
I'd like to do some practice with you.